What's up, y'all? It's Nick here, back with another video. And today, we'll be looking at a trade all 30 NBA teams can make to improve for next season. Before we do that, I want to ask you guys to leave a like on the video, subscribe to this channel, and just keep supporting the channel overall. And now that we got that out of the way, welcome to the video. Not me, only the real beside me. I ain't about to stop till I'm time three. They want to see me on the so let's get right into it. I know I said I was gonna do all 30 NBA teams, but I'ma hold off on the Suns and the Bucks. I know, I know what I said, but it's kind of hard doing trades for teams that's currently in the finals. So I might give them their own video down the road. So since we are going in alphabetical order of team name, first on the list is the Philadelphia 76ers. So they will be packaging up Ben Simmons for CJ McCollum and Robert Covington. I know a lot has been made of this team and how they played in the playoffs large part to Ben Simmons and his value, whether you like it or not, is at an all-time low. But this is still an, an all-star level player. He's, to me, the best defender in the NBA, and I think he just needs a change of scenery. He needs to go to a place where he isn't going to be, you know, clogged up with Joel Embiid. I know Trailblazers just have um, Yusuf Nurkic as their five, but I expect them to trade him too. It's not out there yet, but I expect it to happen. Now, of course, if you're a 76ers fan, you want you want Dane Lillard. I understand that, but I don't think that's in the realm of possibility right now. I know there's a lot of rumors about it happening, but I don't see the Trailblazers doing that as of right now. What you can get is CJ McCollum, a guy that's gonna come in, average 20 points, gonna give you an element that you did not have. I mean, Curry's cool, your backcourt will be small. So that's one thing. You will lose size, but with uh, Curry and CJ McCollum, but you get size back and Robert Covington, somebody that's familiar with the organization, the three and D guy that you loved and ended up trading for something better at the time, but that, piece in Jimmy Butler isn't here anymore. So you get a 3 and D guy, you get a 20 point score, and you're giving up somebody that right now his value isn't that much. You decline a trade for Brogdon in the first, which I thought was a good package, but of course it's been Simmons, so you can see what else, but typically, well, in my opinion, I prefer Brogdon over CJ McCutton because he's a better passer, he's taller, he's bigger, and a better defender. But this deal also makes sense to me. So since the Milwaukee Bucks are currently in the NBA Finals, we'll be moving on to the Chicago Bulls, who will be sending Larry Marketing in a signing trade for Alonzo Ball to the New Orleans Pelicans. This trade is a win-win for both teams. The Pelicans, most importantly, get a big man who can shoot, He and he still has potential to be better than what he's shown these last couple of years. His best season in the NBA was his second year, and then Chicago signed Jim Boylan and things kind of went south. But for the Chicago Bulls side of things, you get a young guard who can help you make a playoff push. Lonzo Ball is the type of point guard you want next to a guy like Zach Levine who is offensive minded. Lonzo Ball is 6'6", long arms, going to be a pest defensively and on the offensive side of the ball, you guys know he is a much improved three point catch and shoot player. Lonzo is not going to take shots away from Zach. He's only going to shoot the open ones. He's going to penetrate. He's going to play make for the Chicago Bulls players. And the, the Bulls have pressure on them this year to make the playoffs. If they want to do that, this probably isn't going to be the only move they make. But Zach Levine is a free agent next uh, summer. And he is one of the only star, the all-star type players that has not made the playoffs yet in his career. He hasn't even touched it yet. So Chicago has some work to do to get him there and Alonzo Ball should be a good start. So the next team on the list is the Boston Celtics who will be traded. Marcus Smart, Romeo Lanford and a 2021 second round pick to the San Antonio Spurs for DeJounte Murray. The Celtics are a team that's always rumored to make trades in the offseason. This offseason is Dame Lillard, it's Bradley Bill. But I think the Celtics should refrain from trades involving Jalen Brown. In my opinion, even though these players are better than Brown, as far as Dame and Bradley Bill, I don't think they significantly, keyword significantly, raise the ceiling of the Celtics um, for them to be trading away Brown. I want them to focus on team construction. What I mean by team construction is players that fit next to the Jays. Their last couple years in the league, they've been surrounded by score first point guards, whether that's Kyrie Irving or Kimball Walker. I want the Celtics to go out and get a guard who's gonna, who, who focuses on playmaking and defense first. I want Lonzo Ball, that would be a dream, but DeJounte seems more realistic. 
DeJounte is a guy that can score, but he's not score first. That's a big difference. DeJounte is going to play make. He's 6'5". He's he has long arms. He's going to play defense, and he's a perfect fit next to the Jays. Now, the next team on the list is the Los Angeles Clippers. I'm not going to lie to you. This one was tough, and I don't have a trade here because they have priorities they need to take care of first before they can even think about trading anything. Number one, they have to bring back Kawhi Leonard. Do everything you can to bring him back. Without Kawhi, there is no contention in Clipperland. Yes, they got through the couple games against the Jazz, and they won two against the Suns, but I don't think Paul George and Reggie Jackson being your best two players can compel you to contention in the Western Conference especially. Now, after Kawhi, you have Reggie Jackson, who balled his ass off in the playoffs, which is a good thing, but for the Clippers this all season, that might be a bad thing because now his price just skyrocketing. Reggie Jackson is a guy that's going to be a hot commodity, just like Cameron Payne in this offseason. I, I, they're going, there's going to be a team that overpays him, and I don't know if the Clippers spend $18, 20000000 million on Reggie Jackson to come back and play with them. I hope Reggie comes back because this is the type of culture he seems to fit well in. So the Clippers re-signed Kawhi and re-signed Reggie Jackson. I had to turn the light on, it's about 10 o'clock around here, but next on the list is the Memphis Grizzlies, who will be trading Jonas Valanciunas, Brandon Clark, this year's 17 overall pick in the NBA draft, and, and a top 10 protected first round pick next year to the Indiana Pacers for DeMontis Sabonis. The Grizzlies are a team that don't really have any like glaring weaknesses. They have a young superstar in Jaw. They could use some shooting. So I was going to go like sign a, a free agent like Duncan Robinson, Kelly Olenek, Doug McDermott. But um, they do need shooting, of course. But Sabonis is a player. The, the Pacers, in my opinion, should just have a fire seat. They tried to trade Brogdon for Ben Simmons. It didn't work. That won't be the last time they try to trade him. They have Karras, but Sabonis is the next to move. Sabonis and Turner probably will be traded this offseason. The Grizzlies, Valachunas is very good. He's not better than Sabonis, though. Sabonis is younger. Then they trade Brandon Clark, who fell out of the rotation and didn't even play in the playoffs and for the vast majority of the second half of the season. So he's not even a real asset to your team. The real asset you're trading, so so you're essentially trading Valanciunas, this year's 17th overall pick, and, and the top 10 protected next year, which shouldn't be that bad because you're probably going to be a, a playoff team next year too, right? But if disaster happens, you get to keep it if it's in the top 10. So I feel like this is a good trade. So next on the list is the Atlanta Hawks, who will be trading Kevin Herter, DeAndre Hunter, Danilo Gallinari, a 2021 first round pick and a 2022 first round pick to the Washington Wizards for yes, Bradley Bill. This Atlanta Hawks team had a great playoff run led by their superstar Trey Young. And this team has a lot of complimentary pieces to Trey Young, but you see when he, except for that one game where he didn't play and they just dismantled the Bucks for some reason. But other than that, Trey Young is the whole offense on this team. Players stepped up like Kevin Herter, Gallinari, Lou Williams had his stints in the playoffs, but a guy like Bradley Bill that you can consistently count on off the ball from Trey Young is exactly what this team needs. I'm not a fan of, how can I say it? I'm not a fan of going faster than you should. I felt like the Hawks tried to fast track their like rebuild by signing uh, Chris Dunn, Rondo, Gallinari, and all of those guys last offseason. And it didn't turn out to be good at the first half of the season, but they got to the East Conference Finals. They got to the East Conference Finals, so apparently they know what they're doing in this fast tracking thing. And I think Bradley Bill is a perfect uh, fit for the Atlanta Hawks. So the next team on the list is the Miami Heat, who are also in a tricky situation because they don't have any tradable assets. The only way they could like actually retool their team is if they fill trade offers for Jimmy Bam and Tyler Hero and that's something I know they don't want to do so they they just don't have assets they have their one asset that they could potentially package is President Chua but we haven't even seen enough of him to even get a glimpse at what his potential is I don't know if a team is like okay I've seen enough of President Chua to give you um, a role player or starter because I like his potential as a player we don't even know that yet. Like, Kendrick Nunn is a free agent. 
they have a team option on Goran Dragic. Um, Duncan Robinson is a free agent. They have a team option on Andre Ro uh, Andre Iguodala. Sorry, and they also uh, Trevor Reza is also a free agent too. Now, with that being said, all of those free agents they could have cap space. Now, where I see them going is trying to sign a point guard or a shooting guard and free agency, whether that's Spencer Dinwiddie, depending on how much he's asking for, or a guy, or a guy, a veteran like Derrick Rose, who is kind of, I know he played for Chicago and that they had a rivalry there. I don't know if he um, takes that into account, but he, he's a perfect experienced, hardworking guard that they can use. The Heat don't have a lot to trade, so I don't know where they will go, but I think it will become clear once they pick up options on guys like Dragic, um, and Eagle Dollar, and when they see where they want to pay uh, Duncan Robinson uh, and guys like Kendrick Nunn. So the next thing we have here is the Charlotte Hornets. I have them completing a signing trade where Devontae Graham gets sent to the Indiana Pacers for Miles Turner. Miles Turner is the type of center that can fit on a lot of NBA teams, but I think the fit is particularly great here in Charlotte. Um, he's only 25 years of age. I thought he was older, but he fits into that young core. He can come in, be that defensive anchor that this young team desperately needs. He can stretch the floor, and you know that pick and roll, pick and pop with him and the Mello ball is going to be deadly. The next team is the Utah Jazz. <laughs> Y'all about to be mad at me, bro, but... And I might get some backlash, deservingly so, but sell Rudy Gobert's stock right now. Same thing as Ben Simmons without the potential. Rudy Gobert's stock is at an all-time low right now. Couple of reasons. He is a three-time defensive player of the year, deservingly so, but he can't guard one through five. Cool, right? Another reason. In the playoffs, when the team and the coach has time to game plan against them. They take away his greatest strength, which is protecting the paint. You have a team that can go small ball or a center that can shoot. His greatest attribute is gone. The Jazz can't use that on defense. And then when you go small ball on offense, he doesn't make you pay on offense because the only way he scores is if somebody feeds him the ball. And I'm not talking about in the post. I'm talking about if he's wide open or for pick and roll, dump off dunk, or an alley-oop. When you have a center that can shoot or, or a small ball team, he's forced to guard on the perimeter like a point guard or shooting guard. Then, his contract is set in and now. His, his max money. Rudy Gobert is a max contract player according to his numbers right now. I tried to look for trades. The Charlotte Hornets could be a place, but contracts won't match. And I don't think they take that contract after what just happened to him in the playoffs. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. The, and to be honest with you, this won't happen because of the contract. And two, the Jazz just won't trade him. I don't see the Jazz, the Jazz trading him, especially not this year. I just don't see them trading him because they will have to retool that whole team. But Jazz, please, sell Rudy Gobert stock. Next on the list is the Sacramento Kings. I have them trading Buddy Hill to the Dallas Mavericks for Kristaps Porzingis. This trade is a win-win for both teams. The Mavericks get a deadly off-ball shooter and creator in Hill, and the Kings get Kristaps Porzingis. Um, his value is at an all-time low, too, after what um, he did in the playoffs this past year. And the Kings just, I don't know what position the Kings want to be in. I don't know if they want to be a playoff team. I don't know if they want to rebuild but they haven't put anything around Fox since he's been there. They haven't hit on any draft picks. Um, ben McLemore, Nick Skowskis, go back to Jim Fredette, um, Willie Cauley-Stein. I don't think Bagley was their fault because he just can't stay healthy. But the only good thing they've done since they've had Fox is draft Halliburton when he fell into their lap. I don't know, I can't wait for the day that Fox demands a trade because they haven't done anything to keep him there. They haven't done anything to keep him there. So I guess Porzingis, this could be a, um, a good place to gauge where he's at this point in his career. He probably will come in there and have a better year than last year, but he probably won't be in the playoffs. So the next team on the list is the New York Knicks who will be trading Obi Toppin, the number 19 pick and 21st pick in this year's draft to the Indiana Pacers for Malcolm Brogdon. 
Nobody expected the Knicks to go to the playoffs. Nobody expected Randall to blow up like this. So I know they lost in five games, but Nick fans, please appreciate what just happened. You exceeded expectations mightily. Now, with that being said, you do need a point guard. Elver Payne's not getting it done. You, you quickly, Emmanuel, found that out, and you started their roles. You got quickly some more time, but you need a creator, a guy that can actually shoot. Because in terms of the numbers, the Knicks had a lot of guys shooting over 40% from three. But you, as you can see in that playoff series, Atlanta just allowed them to shoot because they didn't really trust it. But Malcolm Brogdon is a guy that has been 50, 40, 90 or close to it almost every season of his NBA career. Brogdon is an efficient scorer he's gonna, and he's going to average at least six to seven assists every game, along with Randall, who is an improved passer too. So you get somebody that's going to create somebody that's, that's a proven shot maker, a guy that's going to hit shots efficiently. And then you guys were the number one team defense in the league. Brogdon adds to that. I don't know if you, I mean, you're already number one, but Brogdon brings the defensive side of the ball too, which is very important for um, a guy like Tom Thibodeau. You need guys who are going to get down and be gritty defensively or they're not going to get time. It's just that simple. If you play with Tom Thibodeau, you have to buy in on the defensive end of the floor. And, Bro and Brogdon does that and more. So Brogdon to the New York Knicks. And please let me know if I'm overvaluing Michael Brogdon. I know it's kind of early to give up on Obi Toppin's potential. I still feel like he can be a very good player in this league. And you've given up two late first round picks. I don't know if you just give up one. I don't know what the actual value is for Brogdon, but I love him. I love his game. Of course, he's a big guard that can shoot, play defense, but let me know if I overvalue Brogdon. Maybe I should take out top and put in Kevin Knox. I don't know, but just let me know. Next team on the list is the Los Angeles Lakers, and I have them trading Kyle Kuzman to the Houston Rockets for Eric Gordon in the 2023 second round pick. Lakers fans, you guys have to start being realistic, bro. Nobody is going to give you a star or a starter type player for a package of Tyler Horton Tucker or Kyle Kuzma and Harold. It's not going to happen. Please clip this. If I'm wrong, I will be wrong. But nobody wants that, bro. You're not getting Dane for it. any packs that you give them. If I'm the Cavaliers, I'm not giving up Sexton for Kyle Kuzma and Harold. You might get that because it's the Cavaliers, so I don't know. But I wouldn't do that. This is a trade that you actually can do. Eric Gordon does have some question marks on him because of his injury history, but that's why you're able to get a guy like this. But if he's healthy, he gives you much needed shot creation. He's gonna come off the bench, and give you 14 to 15 points per game, and he's gonna close for you some nights. If he's on, he's a guy that's on. He's a guy that can help score from the perimeter. He drives, he kicks out, he does all that. Eric Gordon is a solid veteran that you can use on your team off the bench and late in games to score the ball. Next on the list is the Orlando Magic, who I have traded Terrence Ross to the Los Angeles Lakers for Kyle Kuzma, yes again. If you're the Orlando Magic, you are in the best position you've been in in years. You're no longer hovering around the seventh AC in the Eastern Conference and almost getting swept in the first round. You have no expectations, you have a new head coach, and you have bolos of young talent. You have two top 10 picks in this upcoming NBA draft, with five I have you picking Jonathan Kuminga out of the G League and eight James Booknight out of UConn. Two guys, UConn, two guys with a lot of potential. Now you need to focus on the health and the recovery of Jonathan Isaac and Markel Fultz. A core of Fultz, RJ Hampton, Cole Anthony, Jonathan Isaac, um, Chumo Kiki, Wendell Carter, Mo Bama, and then you add Kyle Kuzma to that who can potentially explode on this team given the opportunity. This is a guy that averaged 18 points his second year before Braun and them came and they were a championship team. He didn't really get to develop his game all the way. So now he comes to Orlando where scoring is needed. He has defensive players around him. He, he just might thrive and explode there again. You never know. So adding Kyle Kuzma to that young court in Orlando could be a great move. What a magic. Next on the list is the Dallas Mavericks. And I have them trading Chris Jasper's to the Sacramento Kings for Buddy Hill. Yes, this seems like a cop-out. I already did this trade, but I really feel like this move is a win-win for both sides. 
Buddy Hill is a knockdown three-point off-ball shooter. He's a guy that can also create for himself. And if he stays consistent, he will average around 18 to 19 points on at least 39% from three. He'll get more open looks even if he's cutting and spacing next to one of the best creators in basketball in Luka Doncic. The Mavericks don't really have any real knockdown shooters anymore. Uh, Tim Hardaway Jr. is inconsistent and he's a free agent this offseason. Maxi Kleber to me is their next best shooter, but he doesn't really play over 25 a game. And they traded Seth Curry, who was their best shooter for Josh Richardson, who hasn't been anything of what they thought he would be. So Buddy Hill to the Mavericks. Next on the list is the Brooklyn Nets and not having traded Spencer Dinwiddie in a sign and trade to the Cleveland Cavaliers for Larry Nance Jr. What the Nets actually need to do is trade for health because if they're healthy, they're going to win a championship. If you are a Nets fan and you think that your team needs to trade for a starter or all-star type level player, then you need to reevaluate yourself. If you guys are healthy, you will win a championship. The next team is the Denver Nuggets, who I have traded Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr. to the, the Portland Trailblazers for Damon Lillard. Now, I've seen a lot of rumor trades or mock trades for Dames, Goats, Denver, and all of them include Jamal, but none of them include MPJ, which, if I'm the Trailblazers, in my, in my opinion, makes no sense because Jamal's value is down to what it normally could be because he tore his ACL and then he tore towards the end of the season, which means there's a 90% chance next season I'm trading for a guy that won't play the next season. He tore his ACL at the end of the season. So he probably won't play this whole season. So I'll be trading for Jamal and people throwing picks like the Nuggets aren't going to be in the championship if they get damned. And they throwing Bobo, who I like a lot. I think he should be playing way more. But the trade will just be for Bobo and first round picks in the 29 or 30. So, if, in my opinion, if I'm the Trailblazers, I want MPJ. Any trade that involves Dame from the Nuggets, I want MPJ. That's just me. But in terms of Dame going to Denver, on paper, if that happens, they are my picks to come out of the Western Conference. Probably win the championship. <laughs> I don't really know, but so Dame to the Nuggets. Next team on the list is the Indiana Pacers. And I have them trading Malcolm Brock and Jeremy Lamb, a 2022 first round pick and a 2021 second round pick for to the Philadelphia 76 for Ben Simmons. Now I know it was already reported that Brogdon and a pick was offered for Ben Simmons and it was turned down, but this and a CJ McCutton trade, unless Tim Wolves are far ways with D'Angelo Russell, this is the best trade they're going to get off. They said no, but I feel like you can clip this if I'm wrong. In my opinion, I feel like they're gonna come back to the Brogdon trade because they're gonna be disappointed at what teams are willing to give up for Simmons after the playoff run he just had. So, but Ben Simmons for the Pacers. Ben Simmons, I am a firm believer that all he needs is a change of scenery and a team to tell him that, okay, you're our guy, we're gonna build around you. Ben Simmons, he's a multiple time all-star and will continue to be an all-star. To me, he's the best defender in basketball. There was a time where he was aggressive, shooting floaters, shooting turnarounds, shooting that free throw line jumper. He, he was doing it. So you can't tell me as he got older, it's just gone. No, it's not athleticism, it's up here. And you telling me he can't work on that somewhere else? There, there has to be something wrong because we've seen him do it before. When he was younger, you're supposed to get better at your skills as you get older. And I feel like Ben Simmons is a guy that can still get better. He wasn't even aggressive in transition in the playoffs. That's where he's best at, running in transition, bulldozing his way into the paint, playing off his, his quickness and his strength, passing the ball off that. Ben Simmons can still be an all-star, a real all-star in this league while being the best defensive player for the Indiana Pacers if they get him right and if he gets himself right into the gym. 
The next team on the list is the New Orleans Pelicans, and I have them trading Josh Hart and the 10th overall pick in this year's draft for Miles Turner and Justin Holiday of the Indiana Pacers. We already spoke about Turner, but he's also a great fit here. Next is Zion, a team that needs shooting and shot blocking, so Zion can play that four position and that point forward, point guard, or whatever you want to call him. But and they also get Justin Holiday, who's a good uh, swing man. He's a great three point shooter and a defender. They are giving up the 10th pick, but I don't think the Pelicans need a young guy. I think they need a guy like Drew Holiday, who they traded, but that's neither here or there. But it's been reported that they are shopping the 10th pick for, quote, veteran help. So Miles Turner and Justin Holiday are veterans who can help. I didn't want to give up Josh Hart, but I had to make the money match somehow. And I could have just been wild and gave the paces to Eric Bledsoe, but I don't see what any team can see in him as of right now. So, Miles Turner and Justin Holiday to the Pelicans. Next on the list is the Detroit Pistons, and I have them trading Mason Plumby to the Toronto Raptors for a 2022 first round pick while you're protected. Um, the Pistons are one of those teams that don't need trades to be better right now. They are going on with their rebuild. They have the top pick in this year's draft. I expect them to take K Cunningham and trade and Plumlee just gives minutes to guys like Isaiah Stewart and Toronto just said to pick uh Jalen Suggs number four overall so I feel like that's a team if they pick Suggs and he plays like well as a rookie they will be right back in the playoffs and Plumlee can help them get there so for the Toronto Raptors I have them trading Kyle Lowry in the sign and trade to the New Orleans Pelicans for Steven Adams in the 2022 second round pick for the Raptors, this Kyle Lowry thing is all about not letting him walk for anything. You have to get some value back if you can. And they do need a center. I do like Chris Boucher a lot, but he's not really the best at the five position. So maybe he could be the backup five and not be the starting five, so it won't be that bad. So you bring in Steven Adams, who is a guy that's going to be tough inside. You know that. And a guy that can help you out getting back to the playoffs if that's what you want to do. Now, for the Pelican side of things, I know um, Lonzo Ball isn't rumored to come back. So, I wouldn't trust Eric Blesso as your starting one. Um, I do like Kyle Lewis Jr., but I do also like Kyle Lowry coming in there and teaching those young guys at the one position how to win games. Next on the list is the Houston Rockets, and they will be trading Eric Gordon to the Los Angeles Clippers for Lou Kennard, Yogi Ferrell, and a 2022 second-round pick. The Houston Rockets are another one of those teams that don't need to be trading to get better. They need to be trading to unload contracts and veterans, and this is exactly what they're doing here, giving Eric Blesso to the Clippers for a young uh, wing in Kennard and a second round pick. Um, they don't have to give them to the Clippers. They do have other options, but it's just like Orlando with Terrence Ross and other guys like that. Just sell your veterans to the to whoever gives you the best package. Next, the San Antonio Spurs will be trading Derek White to the New Orleans Pelicans for two 2021 second round picks and a 2022 first round pick lot protected. This is again, the Spurs are not a team that's contending in the Western Conference for a playoff spot or anything. So DeMar Rosen, Rudy Gay, and Patty Mills are guys they should let walk. They'll clear up all that cap space. I think they could get a better package um then this for Derek White but just getting two picks and an extra first round pick can just clear up some more cap space for the future in San Antonio. Next is the Minnesota Tim Wolves and this is a trade that's just been rumored all throughout Twitter and everything. The Minnesota Tim Wolves are sending DeAngelo Russell and a 2023 first round pick top eight protected to the Philadelphia 76ers for Ben Simmons. There was a report that said that um DeAngelo Russell were kept out of trade talks I don't know how true that is, but if you're the Minnesota Timberwolves, Ben Simmons is the perfect guy to put next to Carl Anthony Towns, a guy that struggles defensively. You put a guy that is great defensively next to a guy that is great offensively, and they complement each other. I think the Timberwolves can have a nice big three with Cat, uh, Ben Simmons, and Anthony Edwards. I don't know what they do at the point guard position. I guess you don't want to run Ricky Rubio out there, a guy who's not a great shooter with Ben Simmons, who isn't a shooter at all. But they can work around that. They still have um, Jaden McDaniels out of Washington, 
um, who can shoot the ball well too. So I don't really know which way they go, but I do think Ben Simmons is a glove fit for the Minnesota Timberwolves. So for the last two teams, the Washington Wizards and the Golden State Warriors, they will both have the same trade. And the Washington Wizards will be sending Bradley Bill to the Golden State Warriors for Andrew Wiggins, James Wiseman, the number seven overall pick and the 14th overall pick in the 2021 NBA Draft. This pick goes hand in hand and is a win-win for both teams. The Wizards are a team that have two borderline superstar talents in Russell Westbrook and Bradley Bill, and they're not gonna make a push towards a championship. So they're just barely good enough to get to the playoffs in the Eastern Conference. So why not give up those guys, start fresh, and the Warriors have picks and young assets for any team star. And I wanted to find a more traditional small forward for the Warriors with Clay coming back, but Brandon Ingram seemed too unrealistic. And Paul George seemed unrealistic too. That kind of depends on Kawhi's decision to stay or go, but as of right now, it seemed unrealistic. So here we are with Bradley Bill to the Golden State Warriors. Thank you guys for watching this. I appreciate y'all. I'm gonna ask y'all again to leave a like on the video, subscribe to my channel, and just keep supporting the channel overall and share this out so other people can watch it. And I'll see you guys in the next video.